Hello, hello. This is Johannes Watari from Hold to Run. Today I'll be showing how I implemented rate limiting for my backend. Rate limiting is something each backend developer has to consider either for protection of your backend resources or to limit some fun backend functionality to a some user. It depends. I'm using my test queries today to demonstrate this one minute rate limiting for 60 queries. And we'll be sending queries from my server doc application, which I have set up to repeat one second cycles three times into one endpoint and always for the one and the same ID, get one in this case. And that's the exact reaction we want to see. Rate has been limited, error 429. You can set this application for your own backend and define the cycles which you want to set it to run. You'll be also needing a link into this GitHub project. There's a guy called Yu Taibo. He has been he he's the one who has developed this version of rate limiting for Gator. It takes a little work to set up specially in version 2 Gator framework, but you're going to get it correct as I did too. And I'll be showing you how I I was successful to implement this into my backend. And if you like the server doc application, you can download it directly from Google Play and test it out among other applications that I have released. Go check out my homepage holturan.com you can see short intros also in here, but uh, that's about it. Here we are. So, from the Utaibo GitHub project, in minimum, you will need these four classes, rate, rate limit, limiter, and limiting context. Each of them will have dependencies between each other, otherwise it won't work. To begin with, in the uh, application dot module, we have to configure the rate limit to function correctly. Otherwise, it won't start. Ensure you have it for the first that it's going to be the uh, the top function to be called for configuration. Otherwise, you might end up with errors. I'm not yet sure. But uh, this solved my issues. I believe I was running these in wrong order in my first trial. So this is the bare minimum you have to do for the basic setup. Install rate limit class and then give it the basic setup for your default rate limiting. I have just set it up to a maximum time time of two minutes and 60 queries within that time. In my actual routes, I will override this and set specific rate limits to specific uh, endpoints. So you can leave it as it is in here. So in our routing roads configuration we will make those specific rate limiting specifications for each endpoint in here you can see what i have done to for my default page you can only query 10 times within 60 seconds that should be fine because no one's gonna query my empty page it has no content. And today's 
functions gonna circle around this get response. So here I've limited 60 queries per one minute and this is gonna be important to add the additional key extractor. In here you can define EID of some sort so you can catch that specific spammer or a source who continuously keeps on querying your backend endpoint. And with this key extractor, you're able to limit that specific user or a bot or a spammer, whatever it is. If you don't use this key extractor parameter in here, it's just gonna deny all users in general and you don't want that for your backend because you're gonna have legit users trying to reach into your backend without intention of spamming. So consider what's the best case for you to uh, come up with an identifier. I'm just gonna be using the, uh, the ID that I request from the user within the uh, endpoint URL. So what I mean with that, you can see in here, this is my endpoint test get response. And it's pretty typical to also request the actual ID as an identifier. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on. Then I can limit only that certain operator. Now, let's make that actual test from the ServerDoc application. I will start three identical one second get queries. And we have to wait at least for 30 seconds till this rate limiting in my back end should kick in and respond 429 error code, which means the spammer has been rate limited successfully. And it should only be limited for that specific user. So once we get the error code, I will send another query into another endpoint, which should work just fine. Here, error came during this time. Another user is still be able to connect into my endpoint into another endpoint with his ID without issues. And soon after, the whole time of one minute has been reached, the rate limiter will reset itself for this ID and it'll again allow the communication from this client into my back end until it starts re limiting his queries again. Pretty cool. Okay guys, that's all I wanted to show today. And remember one thing, this rate limiting for one minute period and 60 second queries is probably not good solution for production use, but it was pretty okay for this demonstration. And one thing I almost forgot, while you're scouting through these classes from Utaibo's GitHub project, you might need to uh, migrate this into Ktor version 2. You're not gonna be able to import or all dependencies that this requires to run. But once you do the migration into version 2.0 or something else in your new, uh, uh, more latest Ktor framework, it'll just work. I note that small modification that I might do in the future, definitely if I would implement push notifications back to my uh, server dog application, it seems that I'm able to uh, implement, implement something like that uh, with the help of these classes in here. 
and uh, Kator has migration from 1.6 to version 2 which I also used to correlate the current dependencies and, and import calls addresses into my project so go check it out migration from version 1.6 into 2 and it's gonna help you a long way that's all we'll be back